In this video, we'll see how the first derivative and the second derivative can help us find local maximums and local minimums for a function. Recall that f of x has a local maximum at x equals c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in an open interval around c. f of x has a local minimum at x equals c if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in an open interval around c. In this example, the function f has a local maximum at x equals 6 and at x equals 11, and a local minimum at x equals about 10. We've seen before that if f has a local max or local min at x equals c, then f prime of c is equal to 0 or it does not exist. Number c at which f prime of c is 0 or does not exist are called critical numbers. But you have to be careful because it is possible for f to have a critical number at c, that is, a place where f prime of c is equal to 0 or does not exist, but not have a local max or min at x equals c. In fact, this happens in the graph above at x equals 2, since f prime of 2 is 0, but there's no local max or min there. Please pause the video for a moment and try to figure out what's different about the derivative of f in the vicinity of x equals 2, where there's no local max or min, and in the vicinity of x equals 6, 10, and 11, where there are local maxes and mins. Near the critical point at x equals 2, the derivative is positive on the left and positive again on the right. But near the local maximums, the derivative is positive on the left and negative on the right. And near the local minimum, the derivative is negative on the left and positive on the right. These observations help motivate the first derivative test for finding local maximums and minimums. The first derivative test says that if f is a continuous function near x equals c, and if c is a critical number, then we can decide if f has a local maximum or minimum at x equals c by looking at the first derivative near x equals c. More specifically, if we know that f prime of x is positive for x less than c and negative for x greater than c, then our function looks something like this, or maybe like this, near x equals c. And so we have a local max at x equals c. If, on the other hand, f prime of x is negative for x less than c and positive for x greater than c, then our function looks something like this, or maybe like this, near x equals c. And so we have a local min at x equals c. If our first derivative is positive on both sides of c, or negative on both sides of c, then we do not have a local extreme point at all at x equals c. Instead, our graph might look something like this, or maybe like this. The first derivative test is great because it lets us locate local extreme points just by looking at the first derivative. The second derivative test gives us an alternative for finding local max and min points by using the second derivative. Specifically, the second derivative test tells us that if f is continuous near x equals c, then if f prime of c is equal to 0 and f double prime of c is greater than 0, then f has a local min at x equals c. If, on the other hand, f prime of c equals 0, and f double prime of c is less than 0, then f has a local max at x equals c. Note that if f double prime of c is equal to 0 or does not exist, then the second derivative test is inconclusive. We might have a local max or a local min at x equals c, or we might not. 
so we'd have to use a different method, like the first derivative test, to find out. In this video, we introduce the first derivative test and the second derivative test, which allow us to determine if a function has a local minimum or a local maximum at a certain value of x.